Hey everybody and welcome to Slow City Church at home, online, wherever you are. My name is Brent and I'm humbled to be the lead pastor here at Slow City Church. Uh, Before we get started today, I think it's super important for you and I to just take a moment to pause and reflect on the fact that last Sunday on the parking lot at 1150 Laurel Lane, we experienced nine baptisms together, nine individuals who said, I am stepping into this life-saving faith and following of Jesus. And it was an amazing celebration, uh, really special. Um, uh, and I don't want to move past that and just say, God, you are incredible. And the way that God is moving in the midst of this community, this collection of people is a really powerful thing. Uh, We're already looking forward to Easter. We are in this Lenten season where we are approaching Easter and looking towards our resurrected hope um, in Jesus. And so I want to invite you officially to Easter at Slow City on April 17th. We're having two services on the parking lot outside, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Full kids ministry programming will be available during the 10.30 a.m. service. And we're really excited to celebrate Easter together. I want to start today uh, with a prayer that Paul writes for the church in Ephesus. It's in Ephesus chapter 3, and I want to just pray this over our time together. It says this, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. And I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his Spirit. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the width, the height and the depth of God's love. And to know Christ's love surpasses knowledge. So that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And they praise now to him who is able to do above beyond all that we ask think according to the power that works in us glory and to all generations forever and ever amen i love that passage and i love that prayer i love what paul writes here and what he prays for the church in ephesus and what he prays for you and i that jesus is able to do above and beyond what we think, above and beyond what we know to ask for, above and beyond what we could even imagine possible in our lives and through our lives as God does his work in us and through us. As God does his work in us and through. See, God is able to do the above and beyond in and through us as we grow in our relationship with God. As we grow in God's love and are rooted in faith and are filled with the fullness of God, we can see the power of God working in us. And we can see this above and beyond kind of faith and life and impact. Our hope today as we wrap up this one at a time series is to see the above and beyond way of Jesus. To see the above and beyond way of Jesus. A few weeks ago, uh, one of my kids asked to do something, to be a part of something that required some money that was above and beyond our monthly budget. You know, kids, they continue to just ask for more money and ask for more money and just bleed you. And so after um, debating this this expenditure and after talking about this, uh, this, this, this request from one of our kids, we agreed to, to a deal. You, this child, would have to perform some yard work, perform some physical labor, um, perform some dog cleanup and some weeding in the backyard, and we would give said child uh, the money. And I, I love my kids. I love my kids. But we weren't at this, uh, this deal, this project, for 20 minutes um, before I first heard it. Dad, is that enough? Is that enough? Have I done enough yet? And in five-minute increments, Dad, enough? Am I good? No, keep working. Keep at it. Dad, Dad, I think I've done enough. I think I've worked all of this. And I'm doing math in my head. At $15 an hour, it would take you 13 hours to fully pay me back for the thing that we are paying for you. But I kept hearing that. Is that enough? Is that enough? 
Is it enough? And I'm looking around going, the backyard is a disaster. Like, can you see that I'm out here working and I need you to help? And I, I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you go into like, uh, you, you catch yourself becoming your parents. Um, but I became my father in that moment. And I finally, I finally uh, dropped a line that my dad would often drop on me. And I said, enough won't cut it, pal. Enough won't cut it, pal. <laughs> Have you experienced that? We, uh, we, it seems like we live in a world of, is that enough? Or we live in a world of just enough. I'll do just enough to skirt by, just enough to get the grade, just enough to finish the job, just enough to uh, appease my spouse, just enough. I'll show up for just enough time where they see me at the party to acknowledge that I was actually there, just enough. I'll learn just enough about that issue so I can talk about it just enough so that I seem like an expert. I'll act like I care just enough to post something on Instagram. Have you noticed this in our, in our culture, this just enough mentality? And I get it. Many of us are so overextended and overloaded in our lives that to actually put in more than enough effort or time or energy or finances or care into something seems like it would be our, our breaking point. But, but this week, I got to be real, I've been conflicted in my soul as I've wrestled with this just enough. Am I doing enough? I don't know if you've turned on the news and seen the conflict uh, that is breaking out around the world. Um, a real crisis is unfolding in Ukraine as estimates of 1.5 million refugees have fled that country in the Russian invasion. There's still a crisis going on in Afghanistan. There's violence and brokenness and power wielding and politicking and real people across every nation and in our city that are struggling, that are starving, that are hurting. And I've been conflicted in my soul. This week I was a little under the weather and I watched an interview um, in my time at home uh, with a Ukrainian activist on the BBC that said, I just want everyone to wake up. Everyone is just observing how Ukraine is taking the hit and applauding. You are so brave, Ukrainians, but you will do nothing. You're just waiting for photo opportunities on the border. And I'm watching, and I'm listening, and I'm contemplating, and I'm challenged. With everything that's happening in the world, and all the need, and all the anxiety, and all the stress, and all the hurt, Am I living a just enough kind of life? Am I doing enough? See, I don't want to live life where I'm just some observer in some middle class neighborhood in San Luis Obispo that's watching everything, that's knowledgeable of everything. I want to make a real difference in the world, and I think you do too. I don't want to live a just enough kind of life to know about the problems and the pains of the people, but, but I want to actually do something about it. Many of us can spend our lives in this just enough mentality, just enough kind of faith. Billy Graham once said, many people have just enough religion to make them immune to the real thing. Many people have just enough religion, just enough faith, just enough belief to actually make them immune to the real thing. And I don't want just enough faith to where I never know the real thing, to where I never know what God wants to do in me and could do in me and through me because I've settled on just enough. I want to make a difference and I want this above and beyond way of Jesus, Jesus, who stepped into time in the midst of war in oppression, of Roman occupation and affliction and religious self-righteousness and this mess of poverty and pain, saw it, experienced it, was aware of it, was knowledgeable of it, but didn't just live a just enough life. Is that enough? I think I'm doing enough here. But in everything Jesus did, he went above and beyond. He went above and beyond. He went the extra mile. 
I just want us to take some time here just for a moment to kind of run through some of the ways that we see Jesus go above and beyond. Because when you open up the text, when you open up Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you look at Jesus' interaction with people, you, you can never point the finger at him and go, did he do enough? He went above and beyond. How did he go above and beyond? He went above and beyond in prayer. He went above and beyond in prayer. Jesus was rooted and established in God's love and connected to the heart of God in prayer. And he went above and beyond in the way that he prayed. In Matthew 14, 23, we say, we say after he had sent the crowds away, he actually sent those crowds of people away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And it was evening and he was there alone. In Mark 6, we read, after bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. Luke 6, it was at that time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, and he went away to a secluded pray place and was praying there. In Luke chapter 5, verse 16, we see, but Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. Matthew 26, Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples on the night that he was going to be betray betrayed, sit here while I go over there and pray. We see this. Jesus didn't just pray enough. He went above and beyond in prayer. He couldn't get enough of prayer. This is the above and beyond way of Jesus. Philip Yancey um, says, prayer means keeping company with God who is already present. Prayer means keeping company with God who is already present. And Jesus went above and beyond to keep company with God who was present, who was his strength. This is the above and beyond way of Jesus. We see that Jesus went above and beyond with his time. He would often eat with and sit with and welcome tax collectors and sinners. He walks down the road and invites himself over to Zacchaeus' house for dinner. He takes time to converse with critics, with enemies. When a group of kids want to get close to Jesus and the adults are keeping them away because they are talking about adult things, he says, let the kids come to me. He spends time with people, with the sick, with the hungry, with the curious. He went above and beyond to give his time to people, his attention to people. Jesus had this above, above and beyond way about him that he was compassionate. He went above and beyond in compassion. He went above and beyond to touch the sick. When the leper comes and falls before him and says, if you are willing, Lord, you can make me clean. Jesus could have prayed over him, but he reaches out his hand and he touches him. And he says, I am willing. Jesus had this above and beyond way of being compassionate. He wasn't just compassionate enough. He didn't just take pity on people and feel bad for people. He, he went the extra. He did the extra. He went above and beyond to be compassionate. He went above and beyond to break cultural norms. There were all these cultural norms and, and barriers that the religious crowd had, had developed. But Jesus goes above and beyond to break cultural norms. He says, you've heard that you should just uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, pray for your enemies and bless those who persecute you. You've heard it said to seek revenge and seek repayment. But I tell you to turn the other cheek, giving yourself dignity in that, and then extending the grace that God has extended upon you. Peter comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus... How many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Should I, should I forgive him seven times? That's a lot. And Jesus says, forgive them 70 times, seven times. Make forgiveness a part of your heart. This breaks cultural norms. He values those who are socially discarded. And he says, listen, if you want to be great, serve. If you want to be great, serve. The last shall be first. So be last. Not first, not second, be last. The greatest among you will be your servant. We see this. He has this above and beyond way of serving. He actually washes the disciples' feet. In John chapter 13, he gathers everybody together. Let's just read this together. John chapter 13, 4 through 5 and 13 through 15 says this. 
Jesus got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he said, you call me teacher, you call me Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. We see time and time and time again, Jesus, the image of the invisible God, God in the flesh, walk among us, and he kneels down and he washes the feet of simple, ordinary men and women. He serves and he says, if I'm your Lord and teacher, you should do the same. He had this above and beyond way of service. This above and beyond way of giving. We fully see this at the cross where Jesus lays down his life when he takes the cross and he's nailed to it and on the cross he is pouring out the love of God as he is receiving the worst from humanity. And he just keeps giving till his last breath. And he says, I forgive. I forgive. God, forgive them. As, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he's constantly giving and he's constantly loving and he's above and beyond in the way that he would share hope and life and freedom for everyone. This is the above and beyond way of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he didn't just do enough. He went above and beyond to display his love for you and I. That we see this in Jesus. Can I tell you, Jesus lives this above and beyond, not just enough way of life. Am I being redundant here? Jesus does not live this, uh, it, that's enough, but he goes above and beyond to display hope, life, love, joy, servanthood, compassion, generosity, prayer, time, attention. You will never see Jesus not giving above and beyond for you, for me, for humanity. And then he invites you and I to do the same. He invites you and I to this above and beyond kind of faith, one day at a time. Can I tell you, um, several years ago, um, I was in a place where I was fairly comfortable. I had a really good role at a really good church. I was settled. I was stable. We had enough to live on, and we were rolling through life with four kids, and uh, one was just born, and we felt like right in the middle of our enough kind of life, God hit us surprisingly with this burden, this burden for people, this burden for cities, this, this burden for the condition and the state of the church, for those who had been hurt by the church or wounded by evangelicalism or some kind of expression. And we felt this pull on our hearts, this burden to see a need and to, to start a new church in a new city. And we were, we, we really wrestled because we were in this just enough place where we kind of felt safe and we kind of felt comfortable and we were wrestling and praying through this decision to move to San Luis Obispo to see a new church started. And when I had a friend, um, uh, I spent some time, good time with a, a good friend. We had traveled to Ukraine together um, early in ministry, uh, Haiti together, did student ministry together during a time in my life and ministry that was like formidable in my life and faith and and we would always say something to each other in this time. We were traveling all over the world and taking students and, you know, doing student ministry. We'd always say this line, if not you, then who? If not you, then who? And in our wrestling through seeing a new church started in San Luis Obispo and moving um, into SLO and eventually seeing SLO, we were wrestling, like, should we do this? And I remember my friend reminded me of the thing we used to say to each other, Brent, Jenna, if not you, then who? Now, I know that there are many yous that could have started Slow City Church, have been a part of that. I know that there's nothing unique or special about me, but that encouragement was so clarifying to me. That encouragement was so encouraging to me because I know for a lot of my life, I can live my life and my faith like, I think I'm doing enough. Maybe that's that person's call. His call, her call. Maybe, maybe that person, maybe that, that's the you that could do that. 
But that encouragement that God is calling not them to an above and beyond kind of faith, but me. And if not me, then who? And if not you, then who? God is not calling someone else to an above and beyond. I mean, he is, but God is not calling somebody else, somebody sitting next to you to an above and beyond faith. He is calling you to an above and beyond faith and trust and following of Jesus. God is calling you to above and beyond prayer and you to above and beyond dependence on him and you to a above and beyond kind of life that makes a difference around you, not somebody else, you. So can I ask you what my friend asked me in that pivotal time in our lives? If not you, then who? See, Jesus lives this above and beyond life and faith. And he said, if not me, then who? And so he cared for the sick. He cared for the hungry. He sat with the afflicted. He prayed for those who were marginalized. He lifted people up. He called people out who are full of pride. And he walked real hope and life into people because he had this purpose to him. He had this mission for his life. And so do you. So do you. You have a purpose. Did you know that? You have a calling. Did you know that? You have a mission. Did you know that? Jesus shares this with us in Matthew chapter 5. He invites you to this above and beyond kind of faith because this is who you are. In Matthew chapter 5, he says this. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives life to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus lays out a purpose, a calling, a mission, and an identity to you. If you claim to follow Jesus, if you claim to know Jesus, if you are a Christian, this is who you are. This is your purpose. You are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill that is not meant to be hidden. You are a light. And what do you do with the light? Do you hide it under a bowl? No, you lift up this light above and beyond any distraction, any, any, any semblance of discouragement or division in the world. In the midst of war, you light a light and you lift it up above all of these obstacles so that that light shines throughout the whole room and so that everyone everywhere can experience and get hit by this light. He says, you are the light of the world and, and you are purposed to shine. You are purposed to shine throughout your life above and beyond all of the noise. You are purposed and given this call to shine. Live and shine so that everyone would see the way you live and see the goodness and the grace of God. This is your purpose, to not live a just enough kind of life. Ah, I did enough. I was kind enough. I was nice enough. I was generous enough. I did enough. But to live this above and beyond kind of life. That shines light to everyone everywhere. Did you know that's your purpose? Did you know that's your name? Did you know that's your identity? To allow the light of Christ to shine in you and to shine above and beyond everything else. So what if? What if you and I lived this one day at a time, one step at a time, above and beyond kind of faith? What if you and I made a conscious decision that we weren't gonna live for just enough? but we were gonna be about above and beyond. What would that look like for you? What would that look like for me? What would that look like for our church? Can I first say, I am so proud. Hello, Siri. Can I first say, I am so proud of our church. I am so proud of our church. Reflecting over the past two and a half years, I have seen the light of Christ shine in you and through you that has drawn people to himself. And I, I look back over the past two and a half years and I know we have navigated together some pretty interesting times. None of it was a part of the plan. A lot of it was heart-wrenching, heart-aching. None of it was expected, but something really special has happened here. Light has shone. 
light is shining. We've seen growth and life and connection and real ministry accomplished in a pivotal time. You've seen a parking lot swell and grow. We've run out of chairs consistently. We are growing. There are more kids coming to Slow City Kids Ministry. We have a growing middle school and high school ministry, a growing college age, groups popping up all over the city and around the region. More groups are forming and encouraging one another, praying together, encouraging one another to live the way of Jesus. There are more needs in our community that are needing to be met, more ways that we are collectively able to make a difference together. I want to just say I'm proud of our church, and I see the needs continuing to grow. And in this next season for Slow City, as an indoor worship space is built, it actually started this week, I want to challenge us with our remaining time together to collectively make a decision to live an above and beyond kind of life and above and beyond kind of faith. And I want to lay this out in three steps, just three little maybe, maybe things that we can fix our eyes on some vision for the next season of life for Slow City. I want to challenge us to above and beyond prayer. I want to challenge us to above and beyond hospitality. And I want to challenge us to above and beyond generosity. Above and beyond prayer. In the coming months, we hope uh, we hope we hope to open um, a prayer space at Slow City Church throughout the week. We open to open up a space where most likely um, some morning from 6, 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., there's just a space and a place where you and I can just come and be, where we can come and pray, where we can come and gather together. What if we went above and beyond in prayer? In two weeks, we begin a series called When You Pray, and we're really excited to walk through the Lord's Prayer and to see what prayer does in us, what prayer does through us, how it forms us. And we want to be a church that doesn't just gather together, but a church that prays together. We're, we're creating some resources um, to help develop this prayer life in each one of us. And, and I feel like God has this for our church to not just connect to one another, but to learn how to connect to God's heart and to be a church that goes above and beyond in prayer. Number two, what if our church set its eyes on going above and beyond in hospitality? In hospitality. You know, there's a difference between hosting or entertaining and hospitality. Where hosting and entertaining is all about the spread and the charcuterie and the, and, the, and the vibe and everything has to look right and you're kind of showing off what you are or who you are. Hospitality is welcoming somebody into the truest places of who you are and welcoming people with this vulnerability and this approachability and this authenticity. Hospitality is letting people walk into your house when the kids' shoes are still laying on the floor and there's laundry in the basket and not everything's put together. That's real life. What if we were a church who said, we're gonna go above and beyond in hospitality? Sure, we wanna do things with excellence, but we wanna be the most approachable, the most authentic, the most vulnerable and transparent people where we welcome people into our church and into our homes and into our lives. This is not just a collective church thing. This is every single one of us, me and you, saying, what would it look like for me to take a step in above and beyond hospitality? Maybe that means you gather a group of people together in your living room and you say, hey, we just wanna get together once a week, 30 minutes. Let's just pour out our hearts before God. Let's start a prayer group in our home. Maybe you host a small group, not host to entertain, but you host for the point of hospitality. Maybe it means for you taking a step to make Slow City Kids Ministry the most hospitable place in the world. And you say, you know what? I'm not going to sit on the sidelines anymore and just do enough. I want to step up and I want to serve. I want to serve in Slow City Kids or in college age ministry or middle school and high school. There's a great need right now to create safe places where people are seen, are known, are loved where there is vulnerability, transparency, dependency on God. And this takes a church, a collection of people, one person at a time, deciding, I'm gonna go above and beyond to be hospitable. What if we did this? What would the ripple effects of that look like? Finally, I wanna challenge us to an above and beyond generosity. I wanna challenge our church to go above and beyond in prayer, 
above and beyond in hospitality, and above and beyond in generosity. I'm really excited for next week as we get to host Waqil, um, who is from Afghanistan and helps lead Epic International that does relief work in Afghanistan. This week, we are rallying together a one-for-one initiative for a uh, a Ukraine um, relief fund. In the coming weeks, we get to pray for a team that is headed to Uganda to bless a school and will highlight an opportunity in Haiti. All of those organizations and more even locally, we want to respond with generosity. We want to respond with generosity. And I want you to know that above and, gener- above and beyond generosity matters because ministry matters. Relief efforts matter. Encouraging pastors in other countries who are doing church in huts matters. Coming alongside people with clean water and, and food and, and nutrition and medical care matters around the world, around the world, and also in our city. Ministry matters. Kids' ministry matters. The way your kids, my kids, learn to grow in Jesus, it matters. Middle school ministry matters. A place in youth ministry where where leaders lead students to see who Jesus truly is, it matters. Camp matters. Safe places to grow in, in faith and following Jesus and wrestling through life's questions for everyone, every age. Giving above and beyond generously matters. The way our church is able to support those in need in our community with medical bills, rent assistance, gas, and grocery cards makes a difference. Our commitment to partnering with local nonprofits like Family Care and the Slow Food Bank and Lumina and Casa who meet the needs of the marginalized in our city, all of this matters. It matters. It really does, and it makes a difference. And the difference our church is able to make inside the walls of our church as we grow and we encourage faith from birth through the next phase. And the way that we make a difference in our city, the way that we make a difference around the world is only possible, hear me clearly, is only possible if you and I say, yeah, I wanna be a light and I wanna be above and beyond generous. As I look at the generosity of God and he has gone above and beyond to be generous and to give to me, I want to have this above and beyond generosity mark me. Last weekend, we had a men's breakfast um, where Mike Bro was in to encourage uh, some of the guys in our church over breakfast burritos, and he shared something with me. He shared something with our group. Um, He talked to a senior pastor at a pretty large church in, church in North Carolina recently who had fallen on some tough times. Not like a moral failure or some, some big scandal, um, but this church had grown gripey. It had grown to a place that this church was riddled with gossip and complaining and, and there was all this infighting in the church. And in this conversation with Mike, this pastor from North Carolina, having this conversation with Mike Bro. Mike asked some, uh, about some of their values and about kind of what they're, what they're going after. And Mike discovered that they had given $15,000 um, out of their church in 2021 to the local community. And I just heard him say that, and then he looked at me with big eyes and he said, did you hear me? They only gave $15,000 for the entire year. They are a church of 5,000 people, and they only gave $15,000. They have become so inwardly focused. And so he took a picture of our giving statement, that little long oblong sheet that we have at the tent. He took a picture of it, and he sent it to this pastor in North Carolina. And this is what he said. He said, hey, bud. This church meets in a parking lot and gives away five times more every year to their community than you guys are. You have to start loving your city like Slow City. And he shared that with our guys. And he said, guys, I want you to know your generosity is making a difference not just in this city, but around the country. The pastor in North Carolina, this very large church is reignited for eyes for broken and hurting people. 
And though it may make no sense to you how a church can become so inwardly focused, may it never be for us. May we be radically and extravagantly and above and beyond generous, even when it doesn't make sense, even maybe when the numbers may not line up. What if you and I decided to connect to the heart of God? We went above and beyond in prayer. What if you and I said, we want to, be, we want to open up our hearts and open up our homes and open up our time and our attention and the way that we serve? We want to be above and beyond hospitable. And we want to grow above and beyond in generosity to bring food to those who need it, clean water to those who need it, the good news of Jesus to those who need it, so that we can have a kid's, all of the things. What if we did that? I want to tell you, this doesn't happen because of somebody else. This happens when you and I see that you, me, we are the light of the world. If not you, then who? If not me, then who? I want to wrap up with this. On Sunday, on the parking lot, if you're watching this on a Sunday, we are giving away um, an envelope that simply says give 10. And inside the envelope, you'll find a little card and a $10 bill. And we want to put our money literally where our mouth is. And we want to take away every excuse that you might have to go above and beyond in generosity and hospitality and prayer. So here's the challenge that we're laying out this week. Take 10 minutes a day to pray. Set an alarm 10 minutes earlier. Take 10 minutes a day to start developing this prayer life. Take 10 minutes out of your week to sit with somebody and welcome them into your story. Share your story, ask them about your story, create this space for hospitality or welcoming. Maybe take 10 Sundays a year where you sign up to serve. Maybe more. And then maybe use that $10 to go above and beyond in generosity. We're giving you an excuse to do it. We're giving you the money to do it. Because we want to be an above and beyond kind of church. I want to be a, a, an above and beyond kind of person, kind of pastor, kind of friend, kind of father, kind of dad, kind of coworker, kind of neighborhood member. I want to be above and beyond. I want to make a difference in the world around me. And it starts with you and I not, do, not just living just enough, but going above and beyond. So if you're able to get here to the parking lot at 1030, we want to give that to you and make that possible. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you for today. We thank you for Jesus who lived an above and beyond kind of faith. May we move from just enough to above and beyond and may we see that you can do more above and beyond what we think, above and beyond what we can imagine. You can do the above and beyond in us and through us when we decide I'm not just living just enough. We love you. It's in Jesus' name, amen.